Hey guys, Nolan and Jason here with Roofing Webmasters. Howdy. Today is going to be how to get the best roofing leads 2.0 and how much they each cost. I don't know if we include that in the YouTube title. But this is an update to a three-year-old podcast. It's an video. update, but we talk about this stuff all the time, too. Yeah. So I, it, it's time to kind of update it and move over these questions. And we notice that you know people seem to be interested in this topic. So today, yeah. we'll tell you where to get the best leads, what the best leads are, as we've seen this for over 12 years now yep. with hundreds and hundreds of roofers. Um, and how much they cost and what the ramifications of them are. Like how, how how to get involved in these different types of leads and how to understand it so you don't basically don't screw it up. Right. Yeah. So anybody trying to listen to this stuff is attempting to get educated and get the best leads they can, not mess this stuff up. So I go, I mean, for me, I go in order. I'm gonna tell a story too about a guy that got this right. He's a client of ours and probably is very wealthy at this point. Could be anyway. Could be wealthy. I've made enough money to get wealthy and screwed it all up before. And I'm sure <laughs> and some we've of, seen the clients do it. I'm too. sure some of our clients have too. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's not an uncommon thing. Um, I, I call you know I, I relate this to being a baller a lot of times. So somebody gets the big the big money. The good news for the roofer is before they're ready for it. Yeah, breaking a knee ways, or their yeah. career's over in seven years or two or whatever. But the roofer gets to do it again. Yeah, I got to do it again, um, but no way. Yeah. I'm, you know, if I was a baller, it wouldn't have happened. I think that's why a lot of those guys end up broke because they don't get it figured out. Anyway, so I'm going to go over organic leads, organic optimization, Google, door knocking, referrals, repeat business, paid advertising, which is a slew of things. That's paid clicks uh, to paid stuff on Google, social media, and buying leads. And then we're going to go over some auxiliary things like yard signs, neighborhood referrals, stuff like that. Right. Uh, rent trucks, uh, any community involvement. Basically every channel. Every channel. So, all right, let's start with the one that I know brings in the best, which we help with. And we're not going to get into a big self-promotion here, but organic optimization is the best one, hands down. We've it's got the lowest cost lead, the best quality lead, the easiest sale. It's better than repeating referrals, and then we'll say so in a second why. Right. Uh, it's better than door knocking, which I have as number two, actually, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. um, so organic is, uh, there's another podcast we did called, uh, like, somewhere like Roofer Martin, The Big Show. Right. And The Big Show is Google. Everybody forgets that I got an ad uh, this morning, actually, saying SEO's dead. And so that is always done by somebody that <laughs> is selling software or paid advertising. Right. Or nothing. In, that, that's it. You'll only get that sold if somebody's selling the funneling software, paid advertising, they'll say SEO is dead. Actually, SEO is still the vast majority of search. Almost everybody goes to Google to look for something. And while on Google, over 70% click on a non-paid item. Right. We call organic. Roofers look at their map. I think that's the only thing. Or the organic under the map or the map and show up for reputation reviews. Anything not paid yeah. to be clicked on. Anything that's not the Google local service ads or Google guaranteed, some people may still call it, or the clicks that say ad next to. Yeah, if somebody clicked on the front page of Google or second wherever and it, they didn't and it wasn't a paid ad, that's organic or what you would refer to as SEO. Right. That is the vast majority of clicks still that go to Google, which is the vast majority of shoppers. So if you're not on the big show and you've been kind of trampled on by marketing or your damaged goods from being screwed by everybody in digital marketing, <coughs> a lot of guys just give up, yeah. just flat out give up. And, uh, and I, so we, we talk about this a lot. Um, I, someone will say, well, that doesn't work or mapping only works. So let's just say that doesn't work. It's like, well, then why do those guys fight to be up there? Well, they're up there because right. they're big, and and we say no. We, yeah, we've made the point. It's like no, you're you got that backwards. Yeah, they're big because they're up there. Right. Yeah. So if you think that those people spend ten thousand dollars a month <coughs> uh, on on organic, you're wrong. They don't. They don't spend anywhere near that. They don't spend five figures on it. They barely spend. 
they barely spend four figures. I don't know what you would spend ten thousand dollars a month on. But that's what yeah. people think. Yeah. So 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 they, oh they're big they're big so they're up there. No, they're up there. You know they're big because they're up there. Right. They fight for it because it's valuable. The people that are up there are big because they're on Google, not the other way around. Um, so you, in fact, for the record, you won't see a door knocking company up there typically um, if they're a pure door knocker. Right. So so you could have a door knocking crew that's big, but they're not on Google because they're big at door knocking right they're on they're big and usually if they have a big door knocking crew they just they've decided that's their channel that's what they do they might do both but my point is that you can have a big company not on google but big companies on google are big because they're on google right all automatically because they get daily call volume so like that and and those leads are going to be by far the cheapest these leads might cost you 10 bucks a piece 20 bucks a piece 30 bucks a piece all right let's talk about door knocking uh, door knocking, I still like it. I, I personally think that anybody that's in roofing, even though I'm a little hypocritical, I used to have a home security company, and I, I was, I, I was, I don't know, uh, scared to door knock. I'll say, I don't know what else to call it. I was scared to get out and door knock. But but back in the day, and roofers still today, but back in the day it was home security, and it was um, it was it was roofers. In fact, back when I started in. in uh, Alarms, I have never told you this before. You know what was just going out of style for door knocking? What? Not not just, but dying completely. Because I, I was doing uh, home security uh, back in 1997, 98, 99. And it was just now the death of the encyclopedia salesman. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. So, isn't that crazy? Around, but, just a couple of years before that, mm -hmm. when I was job hunting and I answered an ad for a manager of a distribution center. Yeah. And it was a fake out, and they wanted you to be a Kirby vacuum cleaner door to door yeah. salesman. The rainbow vacuum, you remember that? Yeah. So most of my mom bought one of those. The rainbows, <laughs> the Auric was still around until just recently. Yeah. Um, but I, most of the guys will know this because these are famous door knocking things to me. You know, magazine salespeople were still popular until ten years ago, but to, to but people still door knock, and roofing door knocking is not a shabby thing. The reason it's number two to organic is because a couple of reasons. It will actually cost you more. So yeah. we know how much it costs to do organic. We'd be happy to tell anybody the pricing of it. And we can. I, I want to follow back up to what that entails in a minute. But the door knocking still requires a truck, hired a non-owned auto. You're constantly putting ads in ZipRecruiter, hustling, trying to get people. You've got a manager. Those things actually all cost way more than branding your company with a website, content, yeah. design, your Google business profile and getting reviews. So all the stuff that goes into door knocking is far more expensive than this other stuff. It's number two because it works if the owner's yeah. involved. Yeah. So I was a bit of a wuss, I was scared, I was young, I didn't door knock. But what I got good at was organic and optimization. I actually sold 23,000 alarm systems because I got the phone to ring inbound. Yeah. And the reason organics above well, you were it, one of the you were one of the first guys in that industry who really hopped on I did SEO and getting shown on. Oh, uh, absolutely. Because yeah. it was ADT Brinks and then us on yeah. nationally. Uh, even though I was basically just Texas based, we were huge online. So, yeah, I was one of the first ones to ever do it. Um, but we, we, we auto dialed and did that stuff, which I don't even have on the list here, by the way, because I think it's. Well, it's illegal in most places. <laughs> well, no, roofers will still hit the phones. Yeah. Yeah, they'll still hit the phones uh, during storms and stuff like that. But I think they're breaking law back in, you know, up. You know, all the time when yeah. they're doing it. I think it's almost impossible to not violate the No Calls Act and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I don't have that on here anymore. So after, and, and door knocking, I, you know, the price of those leads costs considerably more than organic. And I yeah. don't think most of these guys that door knock realize that. Cost a lot more than... And they, they probably think because they're getting a bunch of guys relatively cheap in terms of like hourly wage or however they compensate them. Yeah. They probably, like you said, they probably think organic is ten thousand dollars a month or whatever. So they probably think they're getting off light, and it's like you could be. They'll, they'll drop five grand easily, yeah. and just some base pay to a manager, truck, hiring an auto, and and ads trying to find them. Right. The other problem with the door knocker, without the organic or getting leads, is that they're churning those people so hard that it's a miserable life for the people that yeah. they hire and for themselves trying to keep them. They might go through fifty people in a year and keep two. You know, wow. or, or three or four. Wow. Easily with door knocking. I, I'd try 50 at it one time when I tried it. 
I just didn't get out there and beat the streets with them enough, so it didn't work. Right. These guys know what I'm talking about. You, you got to be on it. You got to have some system, and you have to be leading. By like a lot of the stuff, well, just like all other forms of marketing we talk about, you have to, as a business owner, you have to be involved. Yeah. If you're not, it's not going to go. Yeah, well. a lot of these guys aren't up in organic because they're not involved. You, you got to, or, or they, or they have preconceived notions that are just not true yeah. about it. Um, all right, so re referrals um, are third because you can't usually get a referral without having first got a lead. I like a referral right. and I like repeat business and I have paid after these two. So people are like, oh, referrals best. Referrals are great, but they you, are. Don't, you don't get a referral without getting a lead. But yeah, unless those, unless you've already done those other steps, the referral never happens. Right. If you don't have organic or door knocking or paid advertising, to bring in a lead, you never got the referral, and you never got the repeat business either. Yeah. So ultimately, that referral came from those other channels. Right. Ultimately, they're down the list because of that, but they are before paid. Yeah. So uh, and door knocking costs money, and organic costs money. Nothing's free. It's just the cheapest one is organic by far. Right. Because of how much it costs to to do the door knocking. Now, uh, repeat business and referrals are great, but that's just freebie stuff after the privilege of the lead. Yeah, I always talk about being, uh, you know, narrowly focused on how am I marketing today. Everything else is a privilege: the service, the infrastructure, the procedures, the you know, just the knowledge base that you gain in the course of being in business is all privilege. Nothing happens without the lead. And so, finally, on this, and then um, paid. So, paid is the worst one. The list going to cost the most, right? And referrals and repeat before paid. Because you didn't pay for them, but you did, and then paid just straight up paid. Yeah. So it's so directly lead money out of your wallet lead immediately, right. which is why a lot of people like it because it's so it's easy. But it costs and, the most. Yeah, and you know yeah. exactly what you get, yeah. and that that short circuits their brain into forgetting it does how much they're paying for it. It does. Yeah. So so what he's saying, what Jason's saying is that people really miss the point when they're right. looking for a lead, looking for a lead. When someone's looking for roofing leads, they typically find the most expensive and worst one because they're not willing to run their brand. Right. And so when someone's not willing to run their business, and I'm, I'm, this is kind of relevant, kind of not, but I didn't want we, we so to make a whole podcast. Like what's similar about, you know, gurus of roofing and gurus in cryptocurrency. Oh. <laughs> They're all damn proud of themselves until the market crashes. Yeah. And so like like the like I'm sure crypto will be back and and you know it'll cost sixty grand for a Bitcoin again someday. But But um, then it'll crash again. Because it's inherently volatile. Yeah, yeah. So so <clears throat> you have everybody spewing how great they are on crypto and then like four months ago it just went crickets. Because they all lost like 70% of their revenue or something, or, or 60%, 70%. And now no one says anything. Well, when I talk to roofers that call in, they're going and blowing during storms, during economic times, like every the whole country. Some people, you know, went homeless, but roofers just cleaned house during COVID and after COVID. Right. And now 20 into, you know, getting towards the uh, latter part of 2022, you know, a lot of the home remodelers, people that stayed at home, couldn't sell their house, uh, equity rich, didn't want to go buy a new home, all, all these things. Um, yeah. Adding on to homes, putting roofs in, there's just all this money being spent. A lot of a lot of real estate trades and stuff going on, low interest rates. And now some of that's gone. Yeah. And so people are calling and I'm like, well, we were busy, but now we're not so busy. It's like, well, you were busy because of this situation, but you never built a brand. Right. You didn't do anything. And it's like, well, we put some ads out for this or that, but now they don't work. Because so they, they work, they just cost way more than they used to because the economic climate or the storm or this or that now, and, and people miss the entire mark on their marketing. Yeah. I, I read a really good comment the other day online as someone, they were talking specifically about SEO, but it could actually kind of applies to all marketing, is marketing cannot increase demand. Right. They can increase, it can increase your share of point. the available business, right. but marketing does not create demand that's not there. So somebody called the other day and I told you. Unless before. you're talking about some product that's new that nobody knows they want because nobody's heard of it before. That's different. Yeah. 
I, 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 a guy called, and, he, and, and, and I, I, I might be able to deal with these people. It's a little corporate of a structure for us um, because of all the locations that they have. Okay. Yeah. And when I get involved in these, and it, it, when there's got to be somebody involved that's reasonable and saying we're going to do this. Right. You know, it can't. It can't just be corporate mumbo jumbo talk. But um, every time you call, there's another person on the phone, and there's another person that has that gets to have a say in the decision. If the smart people put me to a person that doesn't know what's going on at all, there's a problem. Yeah. You know. <laughs> um, so, but but these guys were nice, and they called up and they said, "Well, we uh, one of the guys said we we have a budget to spend." And I was going to tell a story because I think it's interesting. It interrelates to so much stuff right now. This one call, yeah, and it's like we have a budget to spend of, you know, fifty. This will be the third podcast we've got. That we've talked about it, <laughs> yeah, fifty to sixty thousand dollars. And I said, oh, that'd be great. We'd be happy to work with that. But that's uh, I said, that's a lot of money. What, what's wrong? And I said, well, it's not working. That's what made me think about it again. <laughs> it's not working. I said, well, and I was thinking, well, it works. It just costs too much. Right. You have other fundamental issues in the structure of the marketing for the basis of this company. Yeah. And it is that I had a guy today talk to me about this and argue about it. And this is not an argument. I'm not, I show you how this doesn't work. So somebody's in, in multiple locations or, and they're viewing the whole thing improperly. And this might not be the same for this people listening to this exactly in their situation, but they hadn't locally marked it and shown up organically. Right. And in this case, it's because there's over a dozen locations, so they're no longer local, and Google doesn't show them well. Right. It's pretty. It's not easy. It's it is easy for us to fix it. Yeah. It, it's difficult for them to understand it and actually pay for it. Yeah. But I'm like, because the way to fix it is you gotta. If you're talking twelve locations, twelve different metro areas, it might or, have been sixteen, but we might have been able to wrap it up in like you know six or nine. Let's just call it nine locations. Okay, so nine metros, and they don't want to do nine websites, but that's really. But the it thing would they have, can do. But yeah. if that would have been done, it would have cost a fraction, like 20 percent of their budget for tons of locations. Right. Right. Which would have gotten them then hundreds of percent more than the fifty to sixty thousand spent. Right. Which it, huh? it would it, nine locations would be what did you say twenty percent of so, 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 something like twenty twenty five exact prices because stuff changes on what yeah. we charge yeah it's not kind of guesstimate yeah but, but but the point being it doesn't cost a lot to do the organic right and they were having to spend all the money on leads so when somebody comes out and starts buying leads and they say it doesn't work it doesn't work because the return on investment is poor right and the business owner is getting irritated but they've got money in marketing directors and buying leads and all this stuff going on. And and, and, and if you're talking about, you know, a $50,000 budget on Google ads, Google is going to do everything in their power to spend your budget. They, I mean, they have stuff written into their agreements that they, you can tell them only these keywords, narrow focus, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. According to the agreement that you sign with them, they're allowed to expand that in order to spend your budget. Yeah. It, so it, it's frustrating. If it's not working, that means you know they're spending your budget and you're not getting what you need. In my opinion, every roofer's marketing campaign could work well, right? But they have to focus on this, and it doesn't mean. Nolan Walker here for Data Pens. You may not know, but I own a software company, and we have a proprietary software called Data Pens. D A T A P I N S. You can search it at datapens.com. This is not white labeled. I actually own this piece of software and I made it for you. It was made for contractors. You can actually take pictures of jobs up to six, make a caption about the material, the, the brand, the situation, the, the repairs, and post that back to your individual pages on your website, just like that. It's super simple, anyone could use it. It also texts and emails your clients, direct links to your reviews, so it helps reputation and reviews, which helps conversion and map placement. The geo coordinate gets grabbed by data pens and Google can tell where you are. So instead of them just seeing reviews, they see all jobs or even estimates that you do. This vastly outperforms just getting reviews, helps the map show up, helps organic keywords. And remember those captions that you're putting in there help expand the keywords per page and it's great regular content. I love it. We made it just for you. It is organic optimization on steroids for both your website, your rankings, and the map placement. 
check out data pens. I think you'll be happy you did. So let's go back. So organic is proper website, design code base, tons of content about their services and possibly some cities around. Relevant content, relevant updates. Right. Data pen software is invaluable because it allows them to pen where they're going, makes Google feel more comfortable. Even if someone doesn't leave a review, which it helps with, Google sees where work was done. This validation of work makes individual page content more appealing. Uh, more trusted and helps the map show up and getting texts and emails to the client for more reviews gets more activity. But again, even if someone doesn't leave a review, nine out of 10 of them, they see all the work. So the signaling is fantastic. You're adding captions, which is organic content. We've got different ones about data pens if anybody right. wants to see a podcast about it. But when you send out proper branded digital signaling in a variety of ways and you're taking it uh, in full advantage of the big show, which is your ability to show up on Google and actually get dominant there, then you get daily Show call. up on Google organically. Organically. Yeah. Yeah, and then you get daily call volume. That's the least expensive lead. Yeah. And then somebody can go into door knocking, which is probably a good part of most roofing companies, at least knocking the door of the neighbors uh, that around the jobs you're doing. Referrals and repeat are just the privilege because you've got the privilege to have those, but they won't sustain the business. Right. And then any paid is potentially okay. Home Advisor, Yelp, Angelist, Thumbtack, Google Ads, Facebook Ads, Instagram Ads, uh, Nextdoor. You can do a lot of stuff on paid, but it's really expensive. Yeah, all, all of it's valid. All, yeah. all of it can be very effective, but it is expensive. I, I will frequently speak to clients and go over performance with them. I'll be looking at all the analytics in my little bar graph that Google gives me. It'll show this much organic, and then the paid traffic will be double. Right. And they'll be like... Well, why is that so much more? And I'm like, well, you're paying 20 times right. for that double traffic than you are for the organic. Yeah, well, you can show it to them in, <laughs> yeah, in it's the like, analytics. Yeah, it's like yeah. right here. that you, for, yeah. You're paying us this much to get this much traffic. And then you're paying us or maybe somebody else 10, literally 10 or 20 times that amount right. to get just double that. Right. So it's not like you're getting... 10 or 20 times more traffic, you're just getting double. So these are clients already that are with us yeah, who are yeah. already enjoying the big show. Yeah. Um, they just want more. Yeah. But they're having a good time. And I get it. Everybody return. always wants more. But these people have never enjoyed their time at the big show. Yeah. They've never been up and ranking. They don't even know. And so the brain tends to tell you they can't do it. It doesn't mean anything anyway. Everyone's on mapping, which is an SEOable, which it is. And that mapping is it's all completely SEO. Tied in. There's not, I mean, mapping mapping is kind of the opposite of that statement. Mapping is all organic. Yeah. I mean, you you can do ads and maps in the in the map pack now, but very few people do, and they're extremely expensive. So um, yeah, I mean, mapping is highly affected by organic uh, is almost as much as the keywords under the map or the map doesn't show up, they click through the website. Right. Um, and then you have your reputation reviews and all of that non-paid traffic adds up in our client base to about, um, well, they go about, I, I'll, I'll give an example of this before I say it. So if a client comes to us and they already have about 100 clicks or calls from their Google business profile, their map, or about 100 clicks on the organic, their website. So both being organic SEO traffic. Right. That's about standard. 50% on the map, 50% on the organic. Now, most roofers, let me rephrase it, like all roofers I've ever <laughs> spoken to, every single one of them will assume that the map is all the traffic, when in fact, on an average campaign setup, it's only half, which means that and they are not getting the map to show up well because they're organic and their website isn't done well. Right. So it's there's that little hitch. They, they've but screwed it up in two independent ways. We get all of our traffic off of the map, but the map has nothing to do with the website, but it has everything to do with the website, so their map doesn't show up as well as it could. Right. So once, and, and by the way, we know that, for, not just from analytics and stuff like that, which where we see it, but there have been instances where we've had a client get sold by some third party and they're going to optimize their Google business profile and they get access to it. They take um, the link to our the website that we're managing for the client off the GBP. 
they put sometimes they put up a one pager or something, you know, whatever. And then it's, their traffic is horrible. Their, their map, I mean, their their organic traffic is usually affected by it because the map and the website work together. Work together. Yeah. But the organic isn't a, is, isn't affected as badly because we're managing the website properly. But their map ranking will absolutely crash. Yeah. And 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 we see it. And they call and they're just like, "What's going on with my map?" And I go look at their GVP. And I'm like, "Well." Why is this going to a little one-page website that we're not managing? Oh, well, I hired somebody to do this. Well, they hire yeah. someone to do it that's unscrupulous, that wants to control everything, so they put up a website that they own yeah. under their GBP, lie to the client, client gets dismayed, disillusioned, doesn't know what's going on. It, it's horrible. Yeah, It's horrible when that happens. Now, and and, and I've, we've had times where that entity has, um, like gotten full access to their GBP, locked them out and held it hostage. We've idea. seen seriously shady stuff where someone has taken over the GBP and used it to route calls to a different client. I've seen, yeah. yeah. Well, we have seen a lot of stuff. So so you asked me and if say roofer asked me and said, hey, well I, website shouldn't have anything to do with this map. No, the user experience is going to be hurt because a lot, a lot of people that go to the map click on the website. They go to the website and it's poor user experience and won't show the map because of it. Also, if you don't have good representation on the website, like a whole page about a service, Google won't just guess that you provide that service or install that material. Right. So the map won't show up at all, has no chance to show up. And then the website's not getting worked on. The roofer's just slamming reviews nonstop. Yeah. Which is a, a lot of people think the reviews are the whole, the only thing. The, whole the, yeah. the whole factor on the map, right. and we know again, we know that that's not true. So when somebody goes out there, villainizes marketing as a whole because they don't understand it or because they got screwed around, they don't send any branded signaling or think of their company as a digital brand, and they neglect that, and then they start to look at everything as a lead. And only a lead. There's nothing. So when you actually do this properly and you get on organic on the big show, the leads are as inexpensive as they can get. Yeah. Also, when and you, better and better. We cannot emphasize that enough. <laughs> they're they're better leads, and then your brand is healthy. Even your door knocking effort has a higher conversion because the brand looks better because everyone's going to check you out digitally. Yeah. Almost. Every you door knock. You give them your business card. They're going to go in. They're going to look at your website. Yeah, even if you uh, somebody slam sells on the salesperson that you work with, you get a three-day right of rescission to worry about. They're less likely to fall out because your brand looks better. Right. So all of this stuff helps. There's nothing wrong with paid. It just costs a lot. It costs so much that it leads people to call us and say, my paid is not working. It works. It's just super expensive. And a lot of you guys don't like some of the companies that I've mentioned because it costs so much. Right. So paid paid should be regarded as supplemental, yeah, not foundation. It's supplemental or initial, you know, something you do up front. Um, I want to talk a little bit about so so just to recap some of these things. If there's hail or no hail, COVID and home remodels or no COVID and home remodels, low interest rates and lots of home sales or high interest rates and recessions. Yeah. Um, your life is going to be better off. Uh, by far, if you focus on marketing, I like that statement that advertising and organic can't change the share uh, or the the, the, the demand. The, the demand. It can change the share. It can change of the, the share. Oh, the share of the available business that you get, yep. but it can't increase the amount of available business out there because there's too many factors. Going so, on. by definition, we are in a, a two cycle recession, a two quarter recession. Yeah. Yeah. We're in the second quarter. We're in the second quarter of reduction of GDP, right? And it's assuredly going to do that this next quarter and the quarter after that, I think. Yeah. And so you can't change that fact. But the dumbest thing in the world is to not market it at all. And a lot of times when the economy gets rough or things go down, the first thing that a roofer does is cancel their marketing. I think the worst kind of lead, I'll say is a completely free lead. So, and I'll explain myself. Okay. So a, a free lead is gonna equal a horrific lifestyle for people that can't figure this out. Define so free lead. A free lead is someone that doesn't market at all, that doesn't spend any money or effort on marketing at all. And okay. so 
there's nothing really such thing as a free lead. That's my point. Oh, okay. So, I got you. <laughs> yeah, so free leads don't really exist. You, if yeah. you want to be tops, organic is the least expensive if you get a good deal, like roofing webmasters combined with data pen software. But you're paying something for it. Yeah. A lot of these guys will sit there and not do anything. And, I mean, or, or all, let's, let's redefine almost free. You have the cheapest website up. You hope to get a call. You went to a chamber meeting. You went to a meetup. You networked a little bit. You called a contractor friend of yours. You say, I got a... You got any new construction going on? Or yeah, I, I've got a foam rig. I'm not busy. I'll hawk out my services for one-fourth or one-third as much as I would have made if I sold the job myself. And so you begin to enter into this area that is not really a company you're more of a subcontractor right. and uh, that occasionally picks up a job. This is a bad, bad place to be and not gonna equal a great life. This is gonna be kind of an okay life and horrible a lot of times with a little, with a little surge of cash every once in a while, almost in a random chaotic way because you're not running your business and brand. Yeah. So an almost free lead is a horrible lead. What is best is volume with a great return on investment dollar. That is what people should be striving for. Right. Most people strive for spending nothing and don't understand it and go, well, I'll handle it. I'll go slam all these reviews up and I'll do this and I'll do that. And it just doesn't make sense to ignore professional services for some of these things um, yeah. to get a return. Well, the thing I think that scares me the most is when we have a client and, and we have this happen at odd intervals is we'll have a client who's doing well or organic's going great, they're getting traffic, everything's going awesome, and they'll give us a call and I'm like, well, I don't think I need the website because I've hooked up with a, a home builder and I've got um, like six months or a year of new construction yeah. to do. I got a big commercial job. I've got a big commercial job. What, yeah, yeah, we've heard that one. You know, it's going to be, you know, this is a quarter million dollar job. It's going to take months to do. I don't need the website. That's like, yeah, you do. Because best case scenario, let's just say that you're right. And that job goes from beginning to end. If you if you got on with a residential home builder and you've got six months to a year of new projects, building out a new development. And let's say you make good money at it. It doesn't go, it doesn't you know, go under, the money doesn't run out, whatever, which happens all the time too. Let's say it goes all the way to the end. You do that for six months to a year. You may as well have shut your business down and started over. From our perspective. The, yeah, well, from Google's perspective. From, from right. Google's perspective, yeah. right, correct. Um, people just don't understand that they're, they're working their digital brand whether they like it or not. Yeah. And if they don't get the organic part of it right, a couple other things, their branding, an image, then they're going to be hustling a lead from an expensive paid source all the time. Right. And if they do that, life's going to be kind of rough. Worse yet, they give up and try to get an almost free lead, which means they're just bouncing around. Trying. Yeah. Nolan Walker here for Roofers Paradise. Thank you for checking out our podcast here for Roofing Webmasters, where we talk about nothing but marketing. But I'd love for you to check out Roofers Paradise, where I personally interview and talk with roofers. We talk about their successes, their failures, their dreams, their goals and ambitions. It's a great podcast where we actually speak to roofers. Love to have you check out Roofers Paradise. You can find us on YouTube by searching Roofers Paradise. Any platform for podcasts, search Roofers Paradise. Be sure to subscribe, or you can actually go to roofersparadise.show. Look forward to having you over at Roofers Paradise. I, I want to give an example um, of a guy who did this right. The uh, guy was a client of ours for a very long time. Um, and we, back in the day, would listen to some, uh, would, would monitor telephone calls. The guy was a um, lucky recipient of a hailstorm. And um, he had done a really great job of well-rounded marketing. And I want to give him as an example of someone to strive to be like this guy. So he had hooked up with us um, a few years before the hailstorm. Yeah, I think maybe about. Are we talking San Antonio? No, outskirts. Of, okay. Uh, of Austin. Okay. On this guy, this is a different client. A different one. You, you know, know who I'm thinking. About. I know who you're thinking about. <laughs> he did. He did great as well. But but he didn't do a good job of marketing. Yeah. So, so I'm not, yeah. 
Jason's, we won't ever really mention people's names here unless it's something glowingly awesome about them. But Jason's talking about a guy that retired. Yeah. This is a good story too, by the way. So I, I'll, I'll do yours first. Sorry, because, I didn't mean to do no, that. No, I'll do yours first because this guy did a bad job of marketing besides hiring us. Yeah. So the fact that, so a guy called me that was an older gentleman. I'm not going to name his name or anything. He's retired now a block away from the ocean in, in uh, Corpus Christi with a bay boat that he goes out and catches fish. They eat fresh fish each week. So overall, he did okay. He retired from our relationship. Overall, right. he did okay. He called me in, I think, October of 2015, as I recall. Yep, that sounds right. Around December of 2015, his website went live. And as I, if I could got these numbers right, the roofers will remember better than me. Um, around April or so of 2016, it was the worst hailstorm economically in San Antonio history. Yeah. The guy told me before he signed up, he said, I'm so tired of working with you guys. You guys, not us personally, not, not when not, people, yeah, not, general. not to insult you <laughs> personally, uh, he said, but digital marketers, I'm so tired of working with, but if y'all don't do this right, I'm going to retire without any money. So please, no fresh. please help me out. <laughs> so we did all of our work and he did nothing to speak of besides uh, get a few reviews. Uh, this was pre data. We didn't have yeah, this years before. Data. Yeah. So, um, Hailstorm hits and his organic began to pop, and um, he got he went from doing about a hundred roofs to I think about seven or eight hundred roofs in the in 2016. Yeah, in 2017 he still did about 350 roofs. Yeah, in 2018 he called pissed off because he was only going to do about 200 roofs. Yeah, and canceled because all the roofs had already been done. Uh, most roofs in San Antonio got done, actually, yeah. I hear. But that, that's, again, back to that demand, cannot increase demand. But really. when you have phenomenal marketing, your highs are higher, your lows aren't as low. Right. And so... He, the, yeah, that, that's the really irritating part about that whole story is the year he called angry because he was only going to do 200 roofs. He was still doing twice the number of roofs he was doing when he signed up. Correct. With, first. with hardly any roofs left to be done in San Antonio. Yeah. Because he was so high in ranking. Now, he hadn't done any other marketing at all and yeah. didn't understand marketing, but made so much money. Then he tried to expand to Houston and Corpus. Corpus, yeah. That guy. And he's a nice guy. I like the guy. He just didn't understand it. And then he came back after the marketing didn't work after a year and a half or something. And then couldn't get it going again and retired. But he still retired off of that effort that we provided through that Back in 2015, 2016, yeah. that, that two-year run. Built a retirement yeah. home and retired. Yeah. Burned a little money trying to expand to two other locations. We talk about some of these mistakes. It's baller move, like, but this guy done it before. I mean, he stayed kind of frugal, didn't burn all of his money. Yeah. But the guy I'm talking about. He told me his wife was going to divorce him if he spent any more money on it. Yeah. <laughs> Probably just trying to scare him to, sounds like he's, he, I think he's moderately happily retired right now. Yeah. I don't know about married, but he's happily retired. <laughs> <laughs> we, we actually vacationed in Corpus Christi at the beginning of the summer. Yeah. And I thought of him after the fact and looked up where he, because I had his address. I would like to have seen you. He, he, he was, yeah. he was two blocks from the beach we went to. Wow. He was right there. He, if I'd known, I probably would have gone. One block today. away and evidently eats redfish all the time. And yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, we ended on really good terms. It's just unfortunate yeah. that he didn't pick up the full under. People will come with us and do really well but not really fully understand that they're branding their company digitally. Right. And so, so let me tell you about the guy who did the perfect job and was with us for years and years and years um, and had a great relationship with this guy. But he started up and he wasn't anybody. In fact, he was in a different business entirely and got into roofing and bought a roofing company. Um, Hale hit this subsidious uh, suburb out of... Uh, on the outskirts of uh, Austin, like 2000, this was like 2018, maybe, or something. And he'd been with us for two or three years already. And his phones rang off the hook. Yeah. Now, we know about the San Antonio guy because he told us the numbers. This guy, we listened to everything. He got hundreds of calls. Oh, that, yeah, okay, yeah, he had a tracking number. So he, he had hundreds he, of calls per calls calls day yeah. for a week. Then he had 100 calls a day, and he had 50 calls a day. 
and then 30 calls a day for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. And weeks. Like, yeah. like he ended up with like thousands of calls. And it was after a hailstorm. Now here's what's interesting about this guy. And he understood marketing better. Better. Most people don't typically pick up all of it. He ended up getting about a third or 40% of his business organically. I'm going to say about a third of it organically. The guy you're, that's a, I'm glad you brought it up because the guy that you brought up in San Antonio had every penny of it off of. Yeah. 100%. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. This other guy got about a third. Now here's what happens. It's interesting when you have a properly managed business, I'll tell you what he did. Somebody might want to be interested in hearing the story because the guy was very su successful. Um, he had wrap trucks. Now, I, I don't always believe in wrap trucks in a megatropolis unless I'm in my own neighborhood and zip code. <clears throat> right. I often talk about the guy in my neighborhood as a wrap truck and a wrap boat. And I, um, in my old neighborhood, I lived close to the lake. Yeah. And you could see his truck going up and down the road. It was all jacked up, and he was proud of it. Probably like hundred. Two hundred thousand dollars. I don't know how much the truck cost. It was, it was expensive. It wasn't as big as like Grave Digger, but it was a, it was a big truck. You know, it was big. It was like jacked up completely. It was beyond Jeez. an expansion jack because it had its own welded platform, and then it was on top of that. Oh, good lord! So this wasn't like a regular <laughs> lift kit. Yeah. This was a large truck, and um, it was semi monster truck, and he rode around the neighborhood. Um, but so, so this guy I'm talking about outside Austin had rep vehicles, but I like it because it was a microcosm, the little, the smaller market. So he, and yeah. he could get recognized, you know, five trucks wrapped, you're going to get recognized. He also put yard signs out. He also drove his truck to church, parked it at the back of the parking lot. And the church knew who he at was. At the road, yeah. Yeah, the church knew him and he went to church. Um, he had a couple of very prolific market uh, salespeople that they, they all knew him in town, this one or two guys. Um, he did a little bit of paid, but not on Google ads. I think he had maybe one little Google ad. Barely ever got a call off that actually. Um, cause we, out of all the calls we listened to. Yeah. Um, they did a little bit of door, the door knocked the neighbors and they had a neighborhood referral. Um, I, they just had a lot of little things going on and between referrals and repeat business, a neighbor, a spiff referral, like a couple hundred bucks off 250 for, they all from yard signs and from all this stuff coming, wrap trucks, seeing people in the yards, yard signs. The more traditional kind of thing. A lot of stuff going on. Yeah. The salespeople, the church involvement. I've got heard the church more than you think that, that I would have on this particular deal. And then of course, organic and all that. He cleaned house. I mean, it was a, it was a ludicrous house cleaning for a submarket. It's not like hail hit Austin. Yeah. But I swear half the people in that area, a third of them called this one guy. And, um, it was, it was a, it was a beautiful full fledged Martin campaign. So he did a, he did a and great, we don't see that very often. We don't see it very yeah. often. He did his job with us on organic and he did everything else too. And most of the other things that I mentioned, as you can see, didn't cost a lot of money. So the truck wraps are a one-time thing. Not a huge fan of them all the time because you got increased liability, hired, you know, hired non-owned Yeah, auto. but they can be effective. They yeah. can be. Um, and, and he had all these other things, but a lot of them didn't cost much. Yeah. Yard signs can be effective and they're not super expensive. When you're doing the door knocking, you mentioned, that's my favorite type of door knocking when you're doing it in the neighborhood you're working in. Yeah. Instead of randomly having guys blank in a neighborhood, you're already working a house in a neighborhood, so you have the you have a guy come out and walk up and down the street that you're already working. In. Yeah, I I I, I have mm -hmm. a hard opinions on this. If you didn't do that, you're you lazy. <laughs> you, you lazy. I mean, you're at that house. Yeah, you might as well. But that that's when it's the cheapest to do it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you might you could even hit the street behind it because they're like you might have heard us over right over there. Yeah. And those people, by the way, if you come and you give them your business card and say, hey, I noticed something on your roof, might need a little look or something like mm -hmm. that, they will go, they will walk by the house you're working on and scope you out. Yeah. And if your guys are all, you know, well kept, doing a good job. Oh, it's such yeah, an easy time to say, we're, we're right here, <laughs> you know, if you hear some stuff and if you need a bid, 
I, I do agree with canvassing areas and knocking doors. So, I mean, I don't see why a roofer's not aggressive. I, as I had a be. guy in our neighborhood who was doing a, a roof two doors down. Yeah. And he came over. He didn't try to sell me anything. He came over and gave us a business card and apologized for the potential noise over the next couple of days. And that's if there's any problems, problem. give us a call. Yeah. And it's like, it's, it's that, that, yeah, that, that's, that's absolutely it's brilliant because it sticks you, sticks them in your mind, yeah. but it's not, it's um, not aggressive. That's a nice guy. You yeah. Know, he, he's, he cares about my uh, you know, noise pollution in my neighborhood. <laughs> I, Which of course he does not. But <laughs> it's, a, it's a great, it's a great deal. Yeah. I love canvassing too. You definitely should hit up the people in the neighborhood around on the street that you're at and, and introduce yourself. There are going to be workers out there, some stuff going on. It's a perfect time to meet people. Um, anyway, that guy did a great job. Nolan Walker here for Roofing Webmasters. I want you to consider becoming one of our clients. We've done this for 12 years, have hundreds of clients. We help everybody with their design, their code, their content, showing up on Google as high as possible. Clients get regular call volume. If you've never experienced what I call the big show, showing up on Google organically, which is where the vast majority of the clicks occur on your map, your reputation, your reviews, your organic keyword ranking, you owe it to yourself to try us. We even have proprietary software that we own called data pens that lets you post pictures of jobs, unique captions that increase keywords and long tail keywords, uh, your rankings on Google, text and emailing clients about reviews, even posting pins and photos and captions back to Google. All this helps your organic rankings. Data pens is fantastic and the work we do here at Roofing Webmasters is fantastic. Please give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. I don't have a lot else on this. There's nothing at all wrong with buying a lead. It's just the mindset of how the lead's obtained. If people will get it straight in their head about how they can get a lead, what they cost and how they should get leads and view their company as a company that is branded, which is allowed to be done in this, I mean, it's greatest thing we've ever had to show up on, on Google, organically mapping reviews, organic SEO, keyword terms, and most everybody doesn't really. The, the only problem with using paid is when people do everything in the wrong order. If, if you need this much business activity revenue to survive, right. if you start with paid, you have to spend a ton more to get it, which actually means you need more to pay for it in the first place. If you start with organic, you get more of it much cheaper, and then you could do a little bit of paid to get you over the goal line. I don't think we ever really explained it fully, but if somebody spends sixty thousand dollars, yeah, and they literally get almost no organic, where literally almost all the clicks come from in business, yeah. So that's it, painful to hear about. So it, yeah, someone's getting paying for the 25% of paid stuff, but missing the 75% of organic. Right. If they can get 300% more by showing up in organic and spend- At a fraction of the cost. Yeah, and spend 80% less. So they're spending you know, like 400% less to get 300% more. So it's not unusual for so to be able to tell someone that they're gonna get a 10 times better, 12 times better result off of organic than paid because of just that. Yeah. They spend like 80% less and get 300% more. And that's not that's, even taken into account. That's just the number of calls you get. That's yeah. not even taken into account that the calls from organic will be in easier it, sales. That's a good point. Nine no. times out of 10. They're less likely to shop. They're already bought into the brand. They're doing all that stuff. <clears throat> I think that someone should really say, hey, I don't, and this is my mindset on it. I don't mind where a lead comes from. I like getting leads. I'm definitely going to take advantage of the big show, Google, organic, the best thing that's ever existed in humanity. Whether you love it or not, whether you hate that name or not, it's still the best opportunity that's ever existed. I love that. I'm going to do my best to bone up on my door knocking, do some of that, at least hitting the doors while we're out at a job site. The guy who sold the job needs to at least hit six doors while he's out there and prove it or something or whatever. Yeah. And then referrals and repeat will increase. And then if I want to try paid from time to time, I cycle through and try something. But what I don't do... If I want to expand into a, an area, if I want to focus on 
a okay. specific uh, material. TPO, take advantage of a hailstorm. Yeah, take advantage of you know, your, your organic effort started 60 days ago and it's not quite cracking and you get a big hailstorm. Yeah. Uh, you might need to do some pay yeah. just to make sure you stay in the game. That would that be the year. best attitude to have. Yeah. Instead of, I don't understand marketing fully enough, so I'm going to... I'm going to just ignore the fact that this whole thing exists over there and I'm going to be looking for one lead at a time because that way I can't get screwed. Yeah. You're actually doing a little bit of opposite. So there's nothing wrong with a lead, but if you're not handling your brand, you're just running around buying leads. It's just not as good of a situation to be in. Right. Not as good. These guys will get rich <clears throat> off of it, retire and build a house across the street from the ocean in Corpus Christi. Again, 100% from organic. 100%. I mean, 100% from organic and a little bit of luck because of the hailstorm. We're talking about the things that are in your control. I don't. You can't control the weather. But <laughs> I don't think it's lucky. I don't, and I'm, I'll tell you why. It's not lucky that he hit that. He was 60-something years old. He's in Texas, and he has a roofing business. Good point. There's going to be a hailstorm There's going to be a hailstorm at some point. <laughs> he just... And he wasn't lucky either. He was exasperated. He was at his wits end. And he said, you know what? I don't want to pay to do organic. I don't understand this marketing shit, this Google shit. But I'm going to pay these guys. They look like the best. I'm going to give it one more I'm shot. I'm sick of screwing around and not making it happen and not making money. I'm going to give it one more shot. I'm calling Roofing Webmasters. And he called us and he fucking retired from it. Doing it right. You know? Sure enough. Well, I shouldn't have said lucky. I should have said things that are I ain't mad at you, in bro. your control. I, I, no, no, no. I, that, I'm correcting that, that myself. That agitation was not directed at you. That was it, a, it's things that are in your control versus things that are out of your control. You cannot control the weather. Yeah. But if you're in Texas, you're right. You're going to get a hailstorm. You're going to get a hailstorm. And so if you do the stuff you can control properly, you will be able to actually take advantage Luck of Luck is what happens when preparedness meets opportunity. The man was prepared. There you go. The man was prepared. He got Even it. if he didn't know it. Yeah, even if he didn't know it. He, he, but I, what I wished would have happened for him, we talked about him before. Yeah. After he was gone. I, I don't hate on him at all for quitting when he did. He shouldn't have. But it's unfortunate that he retired still with, he retired with enough money to build a house, get a boat, have a retirement yeah. that he enjoys and obviously has a good life. But he could have made a couple more million dollars. Yeah. He could have boomed all the way through that, not fallen off. And by the time he came back, he was basically done entirely. And he left us for a few years and then came back. And then came back, but yeah. things were jacked up because he didn't want He villainized marketing, didn't understand it. Yeah. And we even told him, said, man, we don't control acts of God, but we make things way better for you. Yeah. I can't help it that you went from 100 to 750 to 350 to 200. But 200 was in a year when all the roofs were already replaced, over 50% of the town. And, and it was still double what you did before you still ever signed one. up for us. Yeah. yeah, it's not our fault that he then expanded to two more locations, yeah. gobbled up more uh, revenue, spent more, had more higher expense structure, and ate into the profits of the hailstorm. Yeah. This is the baller effect I talked about. And you know, it should be noted that part of the reason for that expansion was not merely to expand and grow business. Well, it was that he had built that retirement home or it was in the process of being built and he wanted his business there. He should have kept, well, <laughs> but, that, but that location had very few rooftops. Yeah. And probably only replaced and roofs took, when there was a storm. He took his focus. We, we like to say dance with the one that brung you. Yeah. And the market that he was in originally is the one that brung him and he left it. Yeah, we're damn good looking too, by the way. You know, like like not not maybe physically, but like from a. I, I meant the, I was actually referring to the metro area. Oh, he was well us as well. Though. The us as well, but yeah, yeah he, he was in this one place, and he took his focus off the place where he'd made most of his money. Yeah, I mean, we we're a money making professional service to keep to Absolutely. keep with you. Um, anyway, don't make me get all professional, Jason. Jesus, man, get all off track here. <laughs> anyway, I don't know, man. Uh, you get more professional the older you get. It's less entertaining, though, you know? Yeah, it is. This is a very informative podcast. <laughs> a little dry, but informative. No, I thought it was good. <laughs> I rate us 10 stars. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I, I, guys, if y'all want help, we can help you. Um, I, I hope that by explaining this stuff, 
you understand marketing more fully, yeah. definitely check out the big show uh, and the one about data pens and an understanding of organic and what it means and how you interrelate the other digital stuff into your brand and the non-digital items too. Right. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And when you're ready, give us a call. We'd love to have you as a client or answer any questions that you have. Take it easy.